Are you guys ready for this? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. What are, are we doing? Everybody's ready for this. Listen, today, well, this week, whenever this vlog airs, is going to be a good one. You like those bumps? Those bumps are pretty sweet. Listen, I am stoked for this vlog. As you can see, we're in my F450, which, by the way, is our latest giveaway truck at dieselpowergear.com, and it got a little bit of a facelift, so I'm going to step out and show you, but here's the deal. Before I get into that, I want to tell you guys what's going on. We just pulled into my friend right here, Kenny. He's got a big manufacturing facility. And at this manufacturing facility, he's had this giant piece of metal that I've had my eyes on for quite a while. You see, this is where we're at right here. Bam. Mm. Now, here's where we're at. This giant piece of metal, which I have fallen in love with, happens to be basically the end of a giant, like, container? Top of the giant- uh, Tank. Fabrication. Yes, yes. it's Tank. a tank end cap, which also is the perfect shape for a giant hot tub. And I'm talking huge hot tub. So, like the top of a silo? Pretty much. Oh, I thought when you when you say tank, I think one thing. Oh no, not army tank. Yeah. Like a, just like a giant pill. So you took the roof off a silo. You what I'm telling you is on this week's vlog, we're gonna build the biggest wood powered hot tub the world has ever seen. It's gonna be a big one. It I don't might think be, I've it, ever seen a wood powered hot it's tub. It's gonna ever. be a witch's cauldron with a bunch of dudes in it. Yep. <laughs> Dude, so so here, here's the deal. For the longest time I've wanted to build a hot tub that was um, heated by burning wood. So what better way to do that than to get this giant metal tub and hang it from some giant poles like a huge witch's cauldron. So in the spirit of Halloween, we're doing this. But first, let me show you this truck. You have to drink the water after like a spell water? It's, 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 it's soup broth, bro broth. It's bro broth. Bro. Hey, you hear that? Broth. Bro <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna do with this giant, oh hi Hans, Hans is already here, look at that. Basic, remember Hans? I don't know if you saw his intro from the last one, but it was pretty sweet. You know what, roll it again. It's Lobo now. One more time for the people. That's enough. Listen, all right, so hold on. First of all, this guy right here. So this is my F450. I have loved this truck. I bought it brand new and I said, you know what? People love F450s. I love F450s. It's time for me to get a new truck. So we built this up and we are giving it away. And I am not gonna lie, I'm really, really excited about it because look how sick this truck turned out, right? Oh, what are we doing, a photo shoot? Ooh, look at me, I have Diesel Dave. Oh, I don't even wear sweaters or pants. I'm... Check it out. Acid what? wash, check it out. Dude, what size is that? Burlap sack size? That's a medium. <laughs> it's definitely a medium. It's an so, here's the deal, want? guys. We are here at the manufacturing facility that my friend Kenny owns. Which Kenny, by the way, like one of my childhood best friends. He was on the Heavy Checklist podcast with me. And rumor has it, he's getting ready to start releasing some of his real estate investing tips and tricks. So, stay tuned. If he has his channel up by then, here's the plug. If not, it's coming soon. But basically, what we're going to do, we're going to go in here. And I'm going to show you guys this giant tank end cap that just so happens to be the perfect platform for a giant witch's cauldron hot tub. So basically, this facility right here is where they build giant um, tanks, like water tanks, oil tanks, fuel tanks. Um, most of their customers are out in the oil fields. So like if you ever go to the oil field, see these giant tanks for like fracking and oil and water storage. Do they make that specifically? These are the guys. That's a giant tank rolling well there. Basically, spin the giant tanks. Well, this. Oh boy, there she is. There she is in all her glory. I'm so excited. I don't know why. So I was actually just going through my uh, through my phone to try to figure out when I saw this thing first. January 1st of this year, we came out here. I came out with my buddy Kenny. Just for some reason, we were out here, and I came across this beauty, and I said, "Oh my goodness, that's a hot tub." And I literally. No, no, no it's not a hot tub. What is it, real? What do you mean? It's a hot tub. Okay. It's well. I mean, right now it's just a giant piece of dome-shaped metal, but it's gonna be a hot tub. It's gonna be a witch's cauldron. Like literally, 
Forklifts have a tendency to do that. If you're a forklift operator, you know what I'm talking about. If you're using a forklift in a situation where you're not supposed to technically use it, like other than just lifting pallets and stuff, you're gonna try to get creative with them. Shit like this happens all the time. Like, why did that one little part of the fork grab a hold of that old railroad track and decide to pop that thing like an ant on a frying pan? I don't get it. That just it's frustrating. Good news. We got the uh, the bowl loaded. I, it, I gotta I gotta be honest with you guys. My biggest struggle throughout all this has been what to call this thing. I've been texting people about it today, like trying to line up plans, and every time I call it something, I call it something different. It's been a bowl. It's been a tub. It's been an end cap. At one point, it was just metal. It was the piece. It was the piece of metal. It was the piece of the tub. It was the piece of the end cap. It was all these different things. So, I think from like right now, I'm just gonna establish from here on out. I'm gonna call it the tub. Or should I call it the bowl? The, no, tub. The tub. The tub is loaded, ladies and gentlemen. It is tied down. And as you can see, as any good trucker would do, we've got wide load flags right here because we don't want anybody to not see this on the freeway and just get grazed or pushed off the road by a giant bull. So now what we're gonna do is take that beautiful giveaway truck, which you can enter to win at dieselpowergear.com. Every $5 you spend gets you another entry to win that badass F450, which belonged to yours truly, but now it's gonna belong to you, but only if you get entered at dieselpowergear.com. Anyways, we're gonna take this whole rig. We're gonna take it back to the shop. I'm gonna get with my bro more Jeezy. We're gonna figure out how to suspend this big old tub from some giant poles to legit make it look like you know what i'm talking about like uh like the like uh in the olden times when they used to hang like a kettle over the fire and they make like a pyramid out of the poles that's what i'm thinking this might be the best idea i've ever had nah, this this is this is this is the best idea i've ever had the next day it's day number two of the witch's cauldron build and uh Shit's about to get wild because Jackknife Jim's involved. As you can see, this guy right here, he's wearing his, his uh, wild vest, which the wild vest, <laughs> the wild vest is actually, is that bulletproof, Kevlar? Oh, bulletproof, yeah. Here's the thing about uh, Jim. He can get you out of a bad situation really quickly, but he's also the guy who got you into the bad situation hey. very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a fun story about, I don't know if we have any pictures of it, but Jim. <laughs> that, that was, hey, four years ago. Four years ago. Last week. Wow, we've had that truck for way too long. That truck <laughs> was over at the storage yard and Jim was doing something with it, flipped the transmission and it ran him over. And I got a I was just telling you a story about Jackknife Jim and then Hans, our other video guy, who's also not a video guy, who was using his camera, which is actually also his phone, got a phone call. And so now we're using the real camera guy, letting Hans do phone stuff on his phone, which he was using as a camera. I hope that made sense. Anyways, Jim almost died, he calls me and he's like, hey man, I'm almost dead. Can you come help me? I roll over and the truck is like on top of him. And so I, I, I scoop him up like a, like a tender, tender child. He literally swaddled me. And put him in the seat of my way too big truck at the time took him to the hospital and uh, they put his insides back together yeah right they buttoned me up yeah spent a month on the couch it was a, it was a weird good time good as new yeah good as new and then yeah. the truck's still here and nobody ever really touched it since then anyways as i was saying we dropped the tub off over here right we picked it up late last night got it unloaded and we've got it obviously you know delicately set over there so now the other component to this hot tub is the giant poles that it hangs from Right? So my buddy Harry has got like some 30, 40 foot telephone poles, which we're gonna go get, bring them back over here. Then we're gonna figure out how to rig up this tripod and make sure that it's strong enough to hold whatever that fat boy weighs, plus the water. I mean, this thing's gonna be probably, oh, I bet you it's gonna be close to seven to 10,000 pounds once it's fully loaded. So here we go. A few moments later. Here's what I'm thinking. See these bad boys right here? These are old telephone poles which why wouldn't you have old telephone poles? We're gonna take three, four, maybe six, maybe 10 of them, however many it takes to support the weight of the cauldron by creating this giant tripod mechanism. Um, and right now, we we'll probably need to back up a little bit. I'm gonna grab the track hoe and we're gonna load these bad boys up. And then we're gonna take them back to the shop and stand up the tripod and just kind of see how it works. You see, we're gonna do it kind of like a teepee. Teepees basically you lash together the top poles, you stand it up and it creates like this, this you know, thing. 
the difference between this and a teepee is teepees don't really bear a lot of weight. This is going to be bearing a lot of weight. So we're going to see how many pulls it takes to hold up the cauldron. Fun thing about Harry and I is we each have a lot of heavy equipment. And so we've just kind of, we just kind of put our heavy equipment in this pool of stuff that we share. So kind of like what's mine is his and what's his is mine. The best part is he's got a lot more than I do. But his stuff is all like this. Just kind of auction specials. You got to crank on it for a minute. I mean, she'll come to life, but not like my 320 excavator that just fires right up. While we're waiting for the track to warm up, we got a new guy with us today. A new, uh, one of our one of our top-notch uh, media guys. Let me just, just do you a quick, I don't know how this didn't work. Oh, there he hi. is. Hey, hey, everyone. You're back. Yeah, I was, I was gone for a while, but I'm back now. COVID almost took this young man. It was. Tell, tell the world about your experience. You know, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, uh -huh. but it's the biggest. No, that's, right, that's pretty much right where we're going to go ahead and just head back over here and not get into that right now. <laughs> so it was, it was basically like a cold. Oh, I was just tired. There was nothing else wrong with me. Excavators. These right here, these are called. Did this die? Did this die. <sighs> fun fact about excavators is they don't usually die unless they're super cold. The other fun fact I was going to tell you before it died is these are called the bitch sticks. You don't ever touch those with your hand unless you're a bitch. You see, real operators, we run these with our feet. Because these aren't called bitch pedals, these are called man pedals. These are called bitch. I don't know, this actually sounds highly offensive now that I'm saying it over and over. Yeah, my great great grandfather those sticks. It's just, it's, Real operators don't use the sticks with their hands. Oh shit, now it won't start. Anytime we use a track hoe and pick stuff up like that and somebody doesn't go to the hospital, it's a good day. Almost. It's almost too easy. Something will have to go wrong on the way home. Or if this to be a proper trip. That was something's up. <laughs> no, but we Oh, we should go to Flying J. Flying J is the best pepperoni pizza, like probably in the world. That's okay. That's a little aggressive, but it's good. Should we go to Flying J? I would love to go to Flying J. Pizza? Oh, that sounds so good. We got the telephone poles picked up. We're gonna take them back to the shop and now rig up a tripod and see how it looks. Then uh, I gotta get with Morgan to figure out how we want to support this thing. We're gonna need some chains and then he's also the guy who's gonna probably figure out like how we're gonna heat it. And Cause obviously we need jets too. So he's going to be the guy that figures that out. Um, but before we go back to the shop, we're going to make a quick pit stop here. Oh, that's right. And, uh, well, he will thank me later. And we're going we're gonna to stop by the house. We're going to stop by Bud's Palace here. Bud, do you have company right now? That's this guy that I just dropped here. All right. Well, the thing about Bud is he's, uh, he's an unsuspecting ladies' man. You would never guess that this man right here. Oh, you got some you grass set up and everything. It's his lawn. Oh my lawn, man. Yes. It never grows. That's it never have to crazy. mow it. Okay, is that so productions, are those production sandbags? Oh yeah. Um, you yeah. know what? You're, they're they, yours now. They're mine because they ended up in the back of my truck and rode around for like six weeks and I kept telling them, get them out. Yep. They never okay, did. Now they're lawn acres. Yep. So bud, we'll, we'll let you take it from here. This is <laughs> so, so obviously you see this is the wonderful 6-0. You know, you gotta have a little bit of, you can't just look in. Oh, you got double doors. Yeah, double doors. So, I did bag my trash up this morning, but I didn't get a chance to grab it. 
So here's one dresser. Here's another dresser. And then you have the grom. That's pretty much it. Then you got your dining area. And then you got your fridge. And then that's where all the magic happens. You got a motorcycle in here. Well, yeah. So is that where it goes for the winter then? Yeah. I'm gonna, I, I gotta clean my clutter up over there and then we're gonna put a stand in and then I'm gonna tear it down and do what I need to do for the winter. Why is it so warm in here? Well, I have one heater here and then I have one heater up there. This is nicer than I expected, bud. This, it feels like home. So, you know, one, hey. one dresser, dresser two behind you. I don't, I'm not the, seeing. Oh, the totes. Yeah, the totes. My oh, dressers. Hold on, I gotta go. Does that stand for bud or for bud? I don't know yet. <laughs> All right. This that is... was given to me from a very special person, and he said, hang it in your house. I said, okay, I will. And you obviously. I, I, I you did use it for many different things. Bud, here, babes. Yeah. That's oh. all I got for now. Is that a bunk bed? No, just a single bed. But see, this is this is where all of it happens. We well, got you some, say all of it. So we got some brownies. We got some moonshine. We got what kind of brownies. Are those just regular brownies. And then some. We got some uh, instant oral relief gel. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just in yeah. case it's one of those nights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet you got candy corn in here somewhere. No, actually, I do not. Do you not like candy corn? No, I don't. So, I guess when company comes over, this it happy, doesn't happen. The I, company goes straight to the bed. Yeah. <laughs> you dirty, you dirty. There's a lot more room in here than I expected. Oh, shit. The crib's yeah. door. We got so bud. This is uh, the garage over here. Garage. I, always, I always stop in for drinks during the day. <laughs> this is, this nice is actually my first time. Bud, is, bud never invited me in here before. You never well, had a sleepover? I've never had a sleepover yet. But it's because the the couch that it was occupied. <laughs> the gas <laughs> bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my garage is taking up my sleeping space. Yeah. We're. You got a ramp for that thing or just ride yeah. it in? No, I wanted to, but <laughs> just wheeling it in. <laughs> ah! Got any cold drinks in there, bud? No. Oh, just man. oral I got moonshine. <laughs> and hunter proof. I'm telling you, bud is, we, we joke sometimes, but bud is a surprisingly very organized, very thorough guy who I'm not joking when I say does quite well with the ladies. Quite well. Oh, that looks delicious. We stole this from Here's the truckers. thing. This is, not a, this is not a paid advertisement. <laughs> this is just Flying J Pizza. It's the best. There's no, like, unless you go straight to New York to the Mr. Pizza himself, you're not going to find better pizza west Is there west a guy of, named Mr. Pizza himself? Probably. Who's your cousin ask peppers? the Barstool Sports guy. Look what they do to the crust. They do this fun little twist. That's just going the extra mile. That's what we call that. Do they have to do that? No, because people would still buy it. Do they do it because it, it rolls flavor into the crust and gives you a whole new experience when you're done? Yes, that's why they do it. There's like pizza and soup all at the same time. Right, you bite into it and you're like, you're like, is that? What's, what, what kind of soup am I thinking about? Um, Great question. Stromboli. No, stromboli is an actual thing. SpaghettiOs. Oh, SpaghettiOs. It's like, is that SpaghettiOs or is that pizza or is it both? Who knows that? It's delicious. Because it's like, what? as soon as you bite it, one bite, everybody knows the rules. Um, as soon as you bite it, you're like, oh shit, it's soggy. But then you're like, no, that's intentional moisture down there. Oh it's like, it's like this pizza has a basement. It's like a, it's like a double decker. Up top, crispy, cheesy, pepperoni baked to perfection. Down low, if you bite it right out of the oven, you're losing your tongue. Like full blown, your mouth turns into one giant blister. You wait for the right temperature and it's absolutely perfect. And the best part is, it's the gift that keeps giving because once you get to the crust. This is so good. It, you ate a whole slice already? No, I just cheated and went to the crust. Mm. Mm. It's pretty good crust. You always want some pizza or what? <laughs> bud, you want a slice? Sure, why not? What kind you want? Pepperoni, meat? Pepperoni's fine. Give Bud a slice. And bud just took us on a tour of his castle. Just got back to the shop from a wonderful pizza break. We got the telephone poles here. We're gonna set them up here in the parking lot and uh, start kind of bringing up the tripod just to see if the concept works. If the concept works, then we'll obviously take it back down and You're talking set them up right now. Table. Yeah, if we can. I don't know if we're gonna be able to reach high enough, but nothing. Nothing to reach. Telephone poles are surprisingly kind of squirrely to work with. They just if you don't get them stacked up perfectly, like I don't right now, then 
one falls before the others, and it just, once one falls, it's like that game pick up sticks, everything just goes to shit. Like it's about to, and probably three, two, uh, there it goes. There it goes. At least I know what bad things are gonna happen. Oh. That one's apparently going for a walkabout. Essentially, when you build a teepee or a tripod, you set your two kind of main lodge poles down on the ground like this in a kind of like an A-frame pattern. Then you take your third pole and you put it right between the middle of them and then you lash all that together. And then you basically lift the whole assembly up while moving this leg. Uh, obviously this is spread way too out right now and so we're gonna bring it in, but we need to find the same distance on every log so that that's all kind of at the the tie point so i'm going to probably make it 30 foot or so so that the top of the logs might be a bit, little bit yeah. longer and that'll kind of look a little more rustic authentic yeah. but from the joint down to the ground should be exactly 30 feet the hard part is getting this thing stood up because i don't think the forklift is going to reach that high and we don't have the crane over here so long story short i might be bringing a crane over here in a minute mr morgizi is our guy who is actually smarter than all of us combined. And so he's gonna be the one that helps us figure out how to make this thing hot without burning us. He's gonna figure out how to put jets in it. And he's gonna figure out the load capacity of our of our tripod here. So, so you're gonna make a wood tripod yeah. and then, for a wood fired hot tub. Yeah, and then we're gonna dangle the bowl from it. So right now we're just gonna oh, set- you're, you're gonna dangle the bowl? Yes. So now you're making a teepee? Yeah. Yep, teepee chain hang it like a cauldron dude i love it yeah <laughs> i hate it because i know i have to build it but i love it at the same time <laughs> basically he's he's preemptively saw what we were doing here he took the design of the bowl drew it into solidworks which is not an easy task by the way because it's got all sorts of weird stuff going on and now he knows how much it weighs and we're gonna figure out how much water it's gonna hold which in turn is gonna help us understand how much it's gonna weigh with the water and the bowl which is also gonna determine what size of chains and rigging we need and how bad these logs are actually going to fail trying to hold it up. And how many BTUs it's going to take to actually heat that thing. Is that logs? Which will tell how you many how logs? many weeks it's going to take for you to get that to 140 Oh yeah, right. It'll do so it. So you can sit it. She'll be cooking. She'll be cooking in a couple of hours with a nice fire under there. How mad will your neighbors be when you're making large fires next to that brush mountain? No, they're not going to be mad when they get an invite to the Super Bowl hot tub exactly. party. Exactly. Yeah. Plus when there's 12 inches of snow. Yeah, that's true. Who cares, right? So follow more GZ in. He's going to basically show you how he draws this up. He's going to show you the weight, gallon capacity, while I get the tripod somewhat rigged up. Bring that up to the bottom. We got pizza. You did? Blind J pizza. Boxes of them over there. This guy shit. What do you got? 7 Eleven pizza. You don't ever bring that. <laughs> you, you don't bring that <laughs> blasphemy around this shop ever again. You got island crap on it. <laughs> what, what is this shit? This is blasphemy. This is bullshit. Jim. Oh, really? What? <laughs> where's, the, where's the second box? Where's the second box? Hey, where's the other box of pizza? Oh, don't, on. don't. <laughs> hey, hold on, it's in my truck, I think. Oh, I got pizza shirt. How did you get the toppings to fly off before it hit me? How did you hit mine? It pounds to 11,500. Look at this, look at this. This is, why, this is why this is my guy. How many cubic inches, how many gallons, how many pounds. If we fill that tub all the way to the brim, it's 15,000 pounds of water. If we go down six inches from the top, then we're down to a more reasonable number of 11,500 pounds. We're good. We're good. The top's 12 feet, so we probably need to be at least a 15 foot radius in there. If not more, because the top of the tub's gonna come in at so let's triangulate a little bit more. Sexier than I thought it would be. Morgan, what do we need as far as uh we got a 12 foot diameter bowl? Oh, 
20, 20, 20 feet, 7 inches. What were we, 20? This one's an inch out. That's it? An inch. Oh, that's perfect for seven. <laughs> we're golden. A few inches later. I'm just, I'm really satisfied right now. Like I could be done right now. I'm not gonna be because I'm, I'm gonna see this bad boy all the way through to the finish line, but I just, and now I'm very curious how much weight telephone poles can hold. Because that would suck if it fell. Ooh. Like I said, he wants to pull a few run flats out. Yeah, can you do that right now? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Hands? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just slip that underneath there. How high are you going to have this thing? We're probably going to have the bottom of the tub roughly two feet off the ground. Hey, I like this one. And kind of the idea here. Ooh, I got an idea too. We're going to chain the bases together. I was worried about how the legs, the legs of this tripod, you know, if they were dug in dirt, they would, they would stand, which they will be once we finally install this thing. The idea is to install it on the hill above my house for Halloween. Have the bros soak in the witch's cauldron on All Hallows' Eve. But uh, if for some reason the legs want to spread out like they're continuing to do, just chain them all together. This is turning into quite the project. And so if we're going to invest this much time and money into it, then we want to make sure that it's actually, you know, going to work. So now we're building a mini scale of our teepee, trying to figure out if we can bolt the top together and what it would take to do that. The biggest problem is we have to assemble this thing up on the mountainside right so we can't sling ourselves that high in the air because we won't be able to get equipment up there to do so so we're trying to assemble it here where basically we got some big bolts on it get up on the mountain then we can just pull the legs out and it'll go together 